Hello there, I am Gefwin and I'm here with Creeper World 3. Uh, I just want to play a little bit of this because I find it a really interesting game. Uh, this has been one of my favorite franchises for a while. I played all of them. Creeper World 3 is the most recent and I recently discovered that it was on Steam with much to my uh, chagrin. So, what is it? It is very hard to classify. It's sort of a hybrid of strategy and tower defense, focusing a lot on um, controlling ground and resource management. Not exactly resource management as such, more setting up supply lines, I guess you would say. And this is one of the after campaign areas. You can play through the campaign, which I highly recommend. It does a great job of explaining everything. And then you can get to these areas. There's a prospector zone and a challenge zone. Um, the prospector zone has all these star systems and just look at all of this here and each one of the star systems has at least this many levels so it's going to take you a while to do everything in this game it gives you a huge number of maps there is an area with procedurally generated maps etc we're going to go to this planet and start and i can show you what this game is all about i want to show off this game so here's some basic things that you should know these are research thingies if you connect to these and supply them with power, they will give you research. And I'd like to zoom in on the map. I don't zoom in and out as much. This is ore. Ore is useful because it gives you anti-creeper. This is going to be an odd map to do, but it'll be interesting. These little things are uh, nodes. They're creeper nodes. They release the creeper, which is what you're fighting against um, through the whole game. And then this thing is something specific to this zone. If I get this supplied with power, then I collect it and it adds to my prospector zone score. Still not sure what that does yet. <clears throat> so we're going to get ready to go. One of the interesting things about this game, some people are calling this a real-time strategy game, which I kind of agree with. I think it's a hybrid of strategy, real-time strategy, and tower defense. The reason it's not completely a real-time strategy game is because you can plan out your builds and movements while the game is paused which is not something that you can do for a strategy for a real-time strategy game in my opinion that's the whole real-time aspect now this particular map is going to be interesting a lot of the time you have the creeper which comes out as a liquid and it flows across the map and it infringes upon your base but in this map the creeper is not going to be doing that it doesn't have any air towers or things and this large empty area is going to prevent it from doing so so we're going to be building up on this side and then uh, once we've built up a bit we're going to have to send our towers over to this area in order to start taking out the um, creeper nodes. So since we're just building up I'm going to put this on a higher speed. Now your main base produces, oops I don't want to move it, everything can move except for these uh, towers. Your main base produces those little pellets that you saw there, which are your energy. And you use that to build and power your weapons. These green things are collectors. They are what you use to gather more energy, uh, more or less. You see that they cover an area. The more area of the map is green like that, the more your uh, collectors are collecting. And we're just going to make a, a large collector thing. We're going to have a titan. This forge is your research lab area. It collects research from these structures. And then we'll build an ore mine because uh, our anti-creeper is going to be good. You can use ore to create anti-creeper, which is just like creeper. It's a liquid. It spreads. Except you put it out in the map. You control where it goes and it uh, keeps the creeper from spreading. So what we really need to do is, uh, let's increase our move speed. We need to build up some, some towers and things now so that we can make an assault on the mainland here. So I'm going to build a couple of uh, strafer aircraft to get things started. These can fly and deliver uh, death from afar. Then I'm going to build a few bombers which deliver anti-creeper from afar. 
Now you're never going to win with just those. This is, as I said, is an odd map. My real goal is to get a relay point. These relays are very important. As I said, this game is a lot about creating supply lines. Now these relay points give you longer supply lines than your collectors do. Your supply lines are re represented by all these little lines on the screen. And this collect, these, uh, whatever these are, relays, can make longer connections than the other things, and then your resources travel more quickly along the relays. So I'm hoping that I can get to two points on this map that are close enough together that I can connect them with a the relay, though it doesn't look like I can. So this map is going to be all about long range fire, which I'm going to do with my Bertha heavy cannons build one back there and I'm going to need some of these guppy transports which uh, can let me bring power to turrets that are not connected to the grid once I clear an area I should be able to bring down one of my other two orbital commands and start building up on this side but for now, we're just going to build up, and let's build a few cannons so that we are ready to make the push. And we're going to research energy efficiency, because that's very important. As you can see, I'm currently running an energy deficit, which would be a big problem if I was being attacked by the creeper now, because this would mean that my guns would fire much more slowly. They wouldn't be getting the ammunition and energy they needed to fire. At the moment, it all it means is it slows down my building and things a little bit. So I'm also going to build some reactors, which give you power. Not as much as your collectors do, but you can build the reactors anywhere in little tight groups. And it doesn't matter if they're turning the map green or not. Every reactor just gives you some power. Now we're going to turn the gain speed up again, so we don't have to sit here while all my things are building very slowly. And uh, this map... I think demonstrates the one gripe that I do have with this game. I'm glad that this map is the one that I got to show you because this does demonstrate it fairly well. Now as you can see at the moment I'm completely separated from the creeper which is unusual. All right, This is not a situation you will normally see being separated by a large physical boundary like that. But you will be able to quite easily Okay, I need to wait for 60 forge researchy things. There we go. You will be able to quite easily... Um, thing that I'm thinking of. I'm sorry, you will be able to quite easily use your towers and blasters and things to push back the creeper enough that you are fairly safe in your main base. And at that point, you can just build up and build up and build up until you have a completely overwhelming amount of force to attack with. Now this is... Um, oh, and you can use a terraforming device, which is a really cool thing in this version. Um, I'm not going to be able to use it much here, but this can actually change the height of the land around. You can build up physical walls and things with this, which you can also use to turtle up. I think that turtling is a little too easy in this game. Now that is negated somewhat by the fact that uh, the game is about more than just turtling. There are online leaderboards and you can replay the levels as much as you want. And you can actually try to beat the levels as quickly as possible. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can try to replay and beat them very, very fast. which prevents your turtling to an extent. I personally do not really enjoy that kind of gameplay. I don't like going through over and over for very slightly faster scores and things. So that's not something that appeals to me, which is why I find the gameplay can get slightly repetitive. I'll admit that's more my problem. But this is a game where you have to set yourself the goal of, I want to finish this level very quickly. There are 
I think, two levels of the campaign that force you to finish the level quickly. And I found those to be more interesting because they forced me to not do my normal, natural thing of trying to turtle up and just build up strength until I have an overwhelming force. Like, uh, you know, I've built 15-something of these Bertha cannons, and that more or less clears the map every time they fire. Which is fun to look at, but it does make the game a little bit uh, monotonous. So now I want to... So what we're trying to do here now is establish a beachhead, which is one of my favorite things to do in this game. Using your uh, air support, your bombers, and then eventually clearing enough space that you can move your turrets and supply ships in. Uh, I want to actually build a couple of sprayers. These are what normally deliver your anti-creeper. I want to build a couple of sprayers so I can send those over once I have a little bit of a foothold. I probably need another bomber or two as well. But that Bertha cannon is going to help out because as you can see it clears a huge amount of area, though it fires quite slowly. So one of the most interesting thing about this game is you see these little red bars. That is the amount of ammunition your turrets are currently holding. Same with your planes and their uh, refueling points. So, what you can do is let your towers get fully charged. I'm going to research a couple things like uh, move speed, fire rate, more energy efficiency, and then some build speed. You can let your towers get fully charged and then you can move them. So I'm going to move these towers, and uh, not all at once actually, because that's not going to give me a good grouping. I'm going to pause and then plan out exactly where I want them. Let's do one there, one there, and then one in the back there, along with a sprayer. So these towers are going to fly out and start shooting. Uh, that's in a bad place. There we go. And they'll be able to continue shooting until they run out of ammunition that they're carrying with them. At which point I'll need to connect them back up to the network somehow. Which I'm going to do with these uh, guppy planes, but I don't want them to land where they're going to be damaged quite yet. As you can see, my bombers are currently delivering enough anti-creeper to clear a nice little beachhead area. Now my sprayer is here to uh, be able to continue... And uh, actually now my my uh, blasters are too far back because my anti-creeper is spreading a little more easily than I was expecting. Move this turret out here. Move this sprayer out here. And we'll bring a couple of our supply planes over to give deliveries. I think this is really where the game shines hugely because um, either finishing the level very quickly or trying to establish a beachhead like this because then you really have to worry about your supply lines, what you're sending over, what it's doing, like I should have been careful to not connect to this thing because that is wasting energy that I do not need to use at the moment. But it's okay because I've got more than enough for what I'm doing right now. And we should almost have enough room for our orbital command if we move a few things. Let's uh, clear this area a little bit. Maybe we can fit an orbital. No, still not. There's got to be somewhere you can fit this dang thing. Hmm. Oh, that does not seem to be important at the moment anyhow. And now we will slowly creep our towers up. Um... So far, we're not having any real supply problems that I can see, aside from not being able to build our orbital. I really want to find a place we can do that. I want you to auto-target, actually. That will automatically target somewhere with very deep amounts of creeper. Let's turn up fire rate. Let's do some ore efficiency. There we go. So as you can see, it's a very weird kind of hybrid game. It's not exactly tower defense because you are on the offensive most of the time, but it's not exactly real-time strategy. It's not exactly pure strategy. It's a lot about supply lines, and this is not 
getting any um, supply, is it? Let's uh, structures ore mine. Should actually be able to build an ore mine out here, and then bring this up to protect it, and make sure it gets power. And I don't know if that will do us any good, come to think of it. Because I can't find a place to build my frickin' orbital command. Let's go over there. I don't know if they're called orbital commands. I think I've still got some StarCraft par parlance in my brain. And I want my orbital. There's gotta be a place I can build this thing. Wait, there we go. I need to clear over here means I need more turrets, not sprayers, cannons. Give me a couple of cannons. Let's actually um, swap this sprayer, swap this partial sprayer, get over here for this uh, more full sprayer. Uh-oh. I need my bombers back. My bombers finished bombing and I did not notice. What exploded? Ah, my Bertha. And then I have these cannons. So when Creeper touches your stuff, which hasn't happened a huge amount, when Creeper touches your things it takes damage and you can destroy your towers. And these combat towers take a lot of damage, but if you actually let Creeper get near your base like if Creeper came in here, it would easily destroy this entire network. It would take me a while to build back up. If I was not physically separated from the Creeper, it could be a fatal blow easily. So while you can turtle up, and I think that is a problem with the game, and some of that maybe needs to be addressed when they continue the series, which I hope they will, um, I think that the if you become a little bit complacent, and you're not as safe as you think you are, then you're going to run into some fairly large problems. Get down there. Let's make sure, as you can see now, my orbital command is taking some damage. But I'm going to be able to build a couple of collectors and start being able to have this area become self-sufficient. There we go. Now my collectors are operational. My turrets are up. And my uh, other video is exported. Thank you, thank you, go away. And... We're going to continue our bombardment up here because that's going. I'm on airplanes. Continuing our bombardment up here to keep the creeper from spreading so much. Build a couple more ore areas in a second. And now we get to use the mortar weapons, which are very fun. Mortars can fire above the level they're at. As you can see, something like this cannon, which is right next to the creeper, can't actually shoot it because it's a higher ground level. Which is a little bit hard to tell in this 2D plane, but I think it's represented well enough once you learn it. So things like cannons and uh, sprayers can't fire higher than they uh, can see. Mortars can, and mortars take out uh, large, deep pockets of creeper fairly quickly, so mortars are quite useful things to have. Come on. And you actually can do some fairly interesting ballsy things like landing your turrets in Creeper, knowing that they'll be able to clear it out in a minute. Oops, cancel. You have some other things that pop up from time to time. This level actually does not have everything that you can run into. There are Creeper units that shoot airdrops at you that if you can't take them out with anti-air guns will... Uh, will drop creeper in your main base, which is not something that you want to ever. As well as some uh, weird little spider webby things that let the creeper move faster, and a couple of different types of uh, creatures that 
While they will never really seek you out and hurt you, they can stun your towers, they can destroy them if they wind up touching them. Some things of that nature, which adds a little bit of interest and variety. Though as I said, my still main complaint is that it is really easy to turtle up and be fairly safe and just keep building up. So you see, I could keep this little base here uh, functioning more or less indefinitely. I've got two bases worth of supplies funneling in to these few turrets. I've got a berth over here. I'm going to build a second berth to somewhere to give me some other fire support. I can upgrade all of my things like packet speed and build times and stuff to absurd degrees using the research system. And I find it a weird balance to strike with these kinds of games because while you can become very overpowered and become uh, a little bit complacent, the tide can turn on you if you're not paying attention. And also, being overpowered is really fun a lot of the time. So overall, it is still one of my uh, favorite franchises ever. And I would recommend it, especially since it's, uh, I don't really have a price on it, but it's fairly inexpensive for what it is, especially with all of the level variety and things they've added in. You can play this forever. Quite literally being that there are some procedural levels and um, I believe some fan-made, user-created content as well. Anyway, I've been babbling on for quite a while. This is Creeper World 3. I'm going to finish up this level um, without talking. It's going to take me a little while, so I can't think of things to say for the whole go-ahead. I'm going to just speed up, put on some pleasant music, speed up through it. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, do think about checking this out. This series hasn't gotten as much recognition as it deserves, in my opinion. I am Gepwin. I very much hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon. pause it here. Um, I forget to talk about the nullifier. If you're still watching, this is the nullifier. It is a specialty weapon, takes a while to charge up, and it can destroy these note things. That is all.